الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأوفوا بعهدي أوف بعهدكم وإياي بقوم Shammanito Bayou Bandura, respected brothers and elders, beloved youngsters, and my respected sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Happy to hear that we have some sisters in our program. We've been announcing this for the last probably six, seven weeks now, and we've been telling the brothers to pass their messages to their wives, but they don't pass on. They don't go and tell their wives because they think if she comes, then she's going to learn and she's going to rule over me. Yeah? No, not with that intention. You should teach your wife deen, then it becomes easy for you to wake up at Fajr. If she learns the deen, then you don't have to put an alarm clock. She'll be your, your alarm clock and she'll, she'll push you. Yeah? Do you know what I said to my wife the other day? I said, if I don't wake up after the alarm, make sure you push me off the bed. She goes to give me permission, yeah? I said, yes, I don't want to miss my jama'ah, otherwise people will wait for me in Shaburan Muslim. She goes, all right, then I got the permission. So if you teach them deen, then your life will become easy, my friends. Trust me. Your life will become easy. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught deen to his wife, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. That's why a lot of things became easy for him. Because when women is to come, Women is to learn it from Aisha and go. That's it done. Job's done. So you can make half of the job easy. Whatever you're trying to teach your children, if your wife knows it, if you don't even teach these children, your children will learn from your wife. I know in that way you will become lazy, but don't forget that you are getting freedom as well. Yeah, you will get free time. You don't have to worry about it. So that's why bring your wives, inshallah. And bani. Yeah, I'm not an bani. I'm not an astriyohone. Invite your daughters, invite your daughters in law, yeah, invite your children, yes, invite your sisters. Okay, pass the message and let's do something collectively so everyone learn the deen, inshallah. Deen is not for us only, yes, deen is not for the men only in the masjid, deen is everyone's. So everyone needs to learn, everyone in the community, they need to get the message. Okay, inshallah, so work for it. Jazakumullah khairan. Our masjid, subhanallah, what a, what, what a blessing Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with. Our masjid has lots of spaces. Three floors empty, that side. Another three floors empty on that side. Subhanallah. And then our management is so flexible and so friendly. They've opened this side for women and that side for women as well. That's why Sunday you will see women upstairs here. Yeah, on the other talks, the women upstairs there. So our management, they are so friendly and they are so flexible. They open the doors for the women to come and learn. Now it's our responsibility to get our women in, inshallah. Can you do that? Jazakumullah khairan. We are working on the screen as well. We have a screen over there. It's not fixed, so they can't see me, but they can see me from this screen, this side. So that side, they're working on it. Am I right, Sasa? They're working on it and that will get fixed before Ramadan, inshallah. So in Ramadan, all the programs will be broadcast and live broadcast to the women. Yeah, inshallah. May Allah accept our effort, accept our everything, accept our management, accept our mosque, and accept our brothers and sisters who are sitting in front of me today. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. <clears throat> okay, so the ayah I've recited, ayah number 40 of Surah Baqarah. So we are going on going tafsir. Inshallah. Not, not mix and match uh, and not picking from certain parts. I'm going to go in one order, continuous tafsir, inshallah. If Allah gives me the tawfiq to complete it, then that's my dream, inshallah, to complete the entire Quran in front of the public of Shah Quran Masjid. 
Are you all ready for this? Inshallah. That's going to take years, by the way. Yes. Yeah? Yeah? But you have to stay with me, inshallah. Don't give up. <laughs> so the ayah I've recited, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Ya Bani Israel, adkuru ni'mati yallati an'amtu alaykum wa awfu bi'ahdi, ufi bi'ahdikum wa iyaya farhabun. Allah Ta'ala addresses Bani Israel. But by addressing Bani Israel, he doesn't leave it there. He leaves it in the Quran. So it's, it's an address for everyone else who ever reads Quran. So it's, it's, a, it's a command or it's a request or it's an order, whatever way you take it. It's for everyone who ever reads Quran until day of judgment. That's why it's left over there so people know these are the rulings continuing. It didn't change. And if it changed, then Allah didn't give it in the Quran. Because it doesn't want to confuse people. So whatever ruling in the Quran is for us as well. So Allah said, Ya Bani Israel, O Bani Israel, Udhkuru ni'mati yallati. Remember my ni'mah, my favor, my blessing. An'amtu alaykum with which I have blessed you. Remember my favor, my blessing with which I have blessed you. Wa'awfu bi'ahdi and fulfill my promises or promise. Ufi bi'ahdikum, I will fulfill my promises. Wa'iyaya farhabun and only fear me. Wa'iyaya means only me you fear. So what does that mean? What is Allah trying to say? Allah is trying to say to Bani Israel and everyone after Bani Israel that Allah has done some favors on you. Remember those favors. What is the favor? What's the biggest favor Allah Ta'ala has done on us? No one knows what's the biggest favor? Allah Ta'ala given us Iman brothers. Yes. Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with Iman. Ask those people who are rivets. Ask them how hard bringing the Iman and Shahada and staying in the same community. Ask them what sort of difficulties they go through. And what sort of hardship they go through from their parents, from their sisters, from the siblings, from their brothers, from their friends and from everyone. Sometimes because of their Iman, they get kicked out of their house. Their wife kicked them out. Their husband kicked them out if it's girl. Parents kicking them out. Children separating parents because of Iman. Parents separating children because of Iman. You and I, we are blessed brothers. Allah has blessed us with the Iman that we didn't need to learn at the age of 18. We didn't need to learn at the age of 28. We didn't need to learn at the age of 30 or 40. But there are brothers and sisters accepting Iman and they're going through loans. Lots of hardship. So always be thankful to Allah Ta'ala for the Iman. That's the biggest blessing. Next, you remember that Allah Ta'ala has made you a human being. Khalifa. In the previous tafsir, I said it. Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I am making a representative in the world. You are a representative of Allah. What does that mean? Means you are representing his religion to the people. You are representing his teaching to the people. Allah has made you so, so, what do you call, important. So important. You are representing his deen. Well, Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't need anyone, but he has chosen you to represent his religion. Isn't that something big? Yeah, isn't that something big that you should be proud of? Isn't that something that you should look after? The Iman, the connection, the friendship, the link Allah has given us with him. Allah calls us Abd, my servant. Abdi, my servant. Allah calls us his. That's the biggest blessing Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with. We are his. We didn't dis he didn't disown us. He didn't leave us. He didn't curse us. He didn't force us to go to Jahannam. He shows his mercy to forgive us. He shows his kindness to forgive us and get us closer to him. These are the blessings Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with. And beyond that, Allah Ta'ala has made us human beings. Human being, which has sense, which has power of speaking, power of explaining, power of talking, power of reading and writing, 
Angels don't have those. Animals don't have those. Angels only have certain systems which is given into them and that's it. So not all of them can read and write. And not all of them are able to do the job of Jibra'il. And not all of them are able to do the job of Azrael or Malakul Maut. So there are certain angels trained certain way, certain system given in them, and they only work based on that. That's it. They can't do anything this way or that way. But us, Allah Ta'ala made us so flexible. We want to learn 10 different subjects we can learn. We want to speak in 10 different languages we can. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. These are the blessings of Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala made us beautiful. Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ the, the best of ways, on the best of, of system, in the best way I have created the man. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala calls you the most beautiful creation of Allah. Everything else are less beautiful than you. Subhanallah. Most respected and honorable creation of Allah is you, human being. Ashraf al makhluqat Ashraf means most honored creation. So these are the blessings Allah Ta'ala has blessed you and I with, and Allah Ta'ala blessed Bani Israel with, and Allah Ta'ala is reminding the Bani Israel. And do you know what's the next blessing Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with? He didn't give all of these and just set, uh, set us free in the world. He sent messengers for us. Look at that love. That's because of he love, loves us. When mom sends you somewhere, when you were little, he sends someone else after you to keep an eye on you. And says, keep an eye. Is he, is, he, is he getting lost or is he crossing the road properly or not? So someone else keeping an eye on you. That's because of her love. She sends someone after you when you're walking along, when you were little. Remember, does anyone recall this? That your father sent someone after you just to keep an eye on you so you don't get lost on the road. So if, Allah, if your parents does that, you realize, but remember Allah done as well. After he sent you to this world, he sent messengers after you. Why? So you stay on the right path and you cross the road nicely. And you don't kill yourself. And you don't lose the road. You don't get misguided. So for all of that, Allah Ta'ala sent messengers after you to guide you to the right path. And not only that, he sent, sent book as well. So you follow the book if messengers are gone. Read the book, understand the book, follow the book. So you still stay on the right path. These are all of these are blessings. And we, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are blessed more than anyone else because we are the Ummah of the last prophet. We are Ummah of the last prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam wanted to be the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad. <coughs> many, many prophets wanted to be the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad. Allah Ta'ala accepted only one prophet. Who is that? <coughs> Isa alayhi salatu wasalam who will become the Ummah and follow our Prophet Muhammad and no one else. But you and I, we became Ummah without any application. Without any fee, without any dua, without any supplication. You became Ummah. How many times do you thank for this? How many times do we say Alhamdulillah? Allah says, Uzguru ni'mati yallati an'amtu alaykum. Oh people, remember my blessings that I have blessed you with. Now, how many more blessings do I count in front of you? Allah says, Wa in ta'uddu ni'mat Allahi la tuhsuha. You count the blessings of Allah from the beginning of your life till the end of your life. You will keep counting and you will not be able to finish it. وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامُ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرٍ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتُ اللَّهُ That you make all the trees in the world into pens. And all the bahar, bahar means ocean. Turn all the ocean into ink and start writing the thanks of Allah for every blessing. نَفِدَتْ Everything will finish. Everything, the ink will finish. The pens will finish. Trees will finish. The, the sticks and, and branches will finish, everything will finish. Allah's praise won't finish. This is Allah. 
This is what he meant by Udhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum. Remember my blessings I have blessed you with. So brothers and elders mention the blessings of Allah in your heart, quietly and loudly. Remember it in your own time and in your time when you are in front of other people. Remember blessings of Allah in front of your family, in front of your children, in front of your friends, in front of your fellow Muslims. Always talk about Allah's blessings. Because when you talk about Allah's blessing, you get reward for it because it is zikr of Allah. And that's the biggest zikr of Allah when you talk about Allah's blessings. Subhanallah. Biggest zikr. Because that increases the iman. When you talk about blessings of Allah, that increases the iman. You recognize Allah, that Allah has done so much for you. Otherwise your children will say, what did he do for us? What did he do for us? He doesn't realize that Allah has given him eyes because of which he can see today. Children don't realize Allah has given them the mouth and tongue because of which they speak. They think, what did he do today? What did Allah do for me? Allah done everything for you. And that's only you will understand when, you, when your parents talk about Allah in front of you. When your parents talk about the blessings of Allah, then you will recognize who is Allah. Otherwise, you don't know. Someone asked me, who do you worship? Who do you worship? A boy who is atheist in the school. I said, I worship someone who created the sun and the moon and the stars. <laughs> because he won't understand if I say I, I worship Allah. So I explained to him in his way. And that's what Ibrahim salam did. People wouldn't understand who is Allah. He said, the star is my God. Next time he said, no, stars are not my God. The moon is my God. The next time he said, no, moon is not my God. The next time he said, sun is my God. Then he said, no, sun is not my God. I worship something. He said, I worship someone who created the earth and the skies, who created the universe. And I'm not amongst, amongst the mushrikun, amongst the people who associate partners with Allah. Look at the way of teaching. So that's how you teach your children that Allah created all of this. Then they, they realize that behind these, that there is Allah. Subhanallah. Uh, otherwise, if you don't mention the blessings, tomorrow your children will become atheists as well. May Allah forgive us. Amen. And may Allah save us and our children. Amen. Ya Rabbi Alameen. So Allah says, remember Allah's favors on you, what he has blessed you with. وَأَوْفُوا bi'ahdi And fulfill my promises. Means those promises you made with me, fulfill those. What are those promises have we made with Allah? What are those promises? are there that we have made with Allah Ta'ala. One promise is the worshipping of Allah. One, one promise that Allah has created us for worshipping and we have agreed with that already. How we agreed, I will tell you in a bit. We have agreed, we have signed the contract that I will worship. And I will tell you how, how you sign the contract. It's an invisible, it's an invisible contract you have signed. Right, what else did we promise with Allah? <coughs> Anything else? Salah, zakat. We will give, so we will pray the salah, we will give zakat. Well done, go on, a bit more. Hajj. Hajj. Anything else? We worship Allah alone. We are not going to worship anybody. We well done. We, we want to associate partners, yes. Well done. Anything else? Allah. Hmm? Anything else? Shirk. Shirk, good. People say, said that already. Anything else? Good, we promised that, yes. Good. So, anything comes under worshipping, everything you have promised. Do you know how you promised? Shall I tell you? When you said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Have we all said that? Yes. Did you all become Muslim? Yes. You all need to say that, by the way. Yes. Yeah? You all have to say at least a few times a day. So you prove to yourself that you are Muslim. All right? So you all need to say that. The Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. I bear witness that there is no God, no worthy of worship other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger of Allah. Final messenger. Final I added in the bracket from myself. Because if I don't say finals, there are some people claiming they are prophets. Yes. And that's something needs to be very careful about. So, Muhammad Rasulullah is the final prophet. After him, there is no prophets. 
And when he said that, you signed invisible contract. The O Allah by saying that I agree with everything what you have revealed on me. I will follow everything what you have revealed on me. And I will follow everything that your messenger alayhi salatu wasalam taught me to follow. This is invisible contract you made with Allah. Now today if you don't follow something, that's the ayah says you're not fulfilling your promise. Allah says look after my religion. Look after me. Look after my religion. Look after my servants. So always you have to be careful about Allah. Always you have to be careful about his deen, his religion. Always you have to be careful about his creation. Sometimes we hurt people. We hurt people. We don't realize that we're actually hurting Allah. Because we're breaking Allah's promises. Because when we said in front of Allah that Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, that we will follow you as one God, Allah's religion says that do not hurt others. Does He say that or not? Do not hurt others. So now, if you don't follow that, you're breaking your promise. If you hurt your wife, you're breaking your promise. If the wife hurting the husband, she's breaking your promise with Allah. If the children not respecting the parents, they're breaking the promises with Allah because they made a promise that they will follow the deen of Allah and deen of Allah says, what, did, what does Allah say? وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That be nice to your parents. وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Don't say uff to them. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Do not shout at them. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Use noble words to them, soft and kind words to your parents. Now, if you're not doing it, then you're breaking a promise with Allah. Same with Prophet said, Man lam yarham minna. If anyone doesn't have love for the younger ones, then he's not amongst my ummah. So, if you're not showing love and mercy to your children and to your grand grandchildren or to your uh, people in, in, in your house, in your family, the younger ones, if you're not being kind and gentle to them, then you also breaking the promise. Do you see? It's vice versa, both way mistake. So we have to follow the deen 100%. Then we will come under the ayah, وَأَوْفُوا بِعَهْدِي Fulfill my promise. Otherwise, none of us under this ayah. We are all of us, we are disobeying this ayah. Including when Israel. We have to be very careful. Then Allah Ta'ala said, if you fulfill Allah's promise, he will fulfill his promises as well. He will fulfill the promises he made with us. What are those promises? He's going to give us Jannah. He's going to forgive us. He's going to have mercy on us. He's going to give us honorable life in this dunya. He's going to give us honorable life in the akhirah. He will look after us. He will protect us. Yeah, He will listen to us when we call him. So all of these promises he made... But these promises will be fulfilled only, the condition is, if we fulfill His promises. So today, we are doing one way. We're not allowing His ones, we're only doing my one, I, our ones. So that's why it doesn't work. Our du'as are not accepted. Our du'as doesn't get accepted. Why? Because it's not both ways. It's one way. I don't want to pray my salah, but I want something. I don't want to pray my sunnah, I want something. I want to pray my, I don't want to pray my nawafil, but I want something from him. How? How? Are you his boss? Are you Allah's boss? Or Allah is your boss? Which way? Maliki yawmiddi. Maliki nas. Allah is the owner of the day of judgment. Allah is the king of the day of judgment. Maliki nas. Uh, brothers upstairs empty. You can pray peacefully over there. Mic, mics are switched off as well. Uh, sisters on this side, I think. Yes. Yeah. Sisters on this side, this side is empty, brothers. You can pray for them. Right, so I was saying, so in the Quran, we say Allah is the king of the day of judgment. Allah is the king of everything. Allah is the king of mankind. The kingdom of the skies and kingdom of the earth is belong to Allah Ta'ala. Everything, all treasure belong to Him. We all say that. But we boss over him. We ask for things without pleasing him. 
Are you understanding where the mistake is? Prophet ﷺ's system was different. He used to pray day and night, and then he used to ask where angels is to come and fight on behalf of that human being in the battle. In the battle of Badr, angels were fighting. Yeah, Sahaba, Sahaba, they say, we lift our sword and we see other hundreds of swords going up, but we can't see the human. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, angels, nasrum min Allah, it was the help of Allah, that Allah sent the help down. And today the same help will come down, my friends, my brothers, sisters, elders and youngsters, if you only fulfill the promises what you made with Allah, then Allah will definitely fulfill his promises and you will live like a king. You will live in this world like a king, <coughs> like Sahaba did. Like Sahaba did. They lived the life of kings. Allah Ta'ala has blessed them with. And you will have it as well if you only fulfill this ayah, this ayah asking. The last bit it says that and only fear me. What does that mean? Why did he say only? Iyaya means when you say Iyaka, Iyaya. Iyana means only us, only me, only we, only. So when you add Iyya to it, it makes you only. So Iyaka na'budu, we only worship you. Wa Iyaka nasta'id, we only seek help from you. So wa Iyaya farhabun, and only me you fear. What does that mean? Why? Why did he say only me? That means he knows that we don't only fear him. We fear some other things. Yes? As soon as light goes off, everyone will be scared of jinns. Yeah? They will say, Mulana, is there jinns in the mosque? Yeah? So that's a fear. When the rijala, what's the what's the ayah? وَأَنَّهُ ظَنُّوا كَمَا ظَنَنْتُمْ أَلَّا يَبْعَثَ اللَّهُ أَحَدًا وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِنَ الْإِنْسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا That there are some men who seek help from the jinns. Who takes jinn as God. Shaitan. So, there are fear of jinns. And last time I was saying to kids, there are fear of spiders, and fear of cockroaches, and fear of small, small things. So, Allah said, no, only fear Allah and nothing else. Don't fear anything else. Yes? Do you know what Prophet ﷺ said? لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق You cannot obey someone when you disobey your Creator. Understand carefully. When you disobey your master and you obeying someone else, that obeying is haram. So let's say your mom said, go and buy me alcohol. <coughs> Allah said, no, don't buy alcohol. Here, obeying your mom is haram. Because you're obeying in something which Quran clearly negates it. Are you understanding me? Yes. Yes, your boss said that come and attend the, the program, the function, and the boss is very well known, very rich man, and he's giving you bigger salary, and you are the top worker under his eyes. Now he invited to the party, his daughter's birthday. You went, he offered you a glass of alcohol, drink. Yeah, now you're thinking, what do I do now? If I don't drink, my job is in danger, and if I drink, then my iman is in danger. If I don't drink, my job is in danger. And if I drink, then what's in danger? Iman, Iman is in danger. <coughs> so what do you do? Allah says, wa iyaya farhabun fear me. Prioritize your Iman, my friend. Because if Iman goes, and that's the time Azrael comes and switches the light of your life, that's it done. You have no chance to repent. Are you understanding my, my words? Azrael, the malakul maut comes and switches of the light, light of your life. And that's the end of it, finished. You might have done so much ibadah, but your end is bad. So that's why always ask for good ending. And always fear Allah. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always used to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka husn al-khatima. Wallah, I, was, I ask you best ending. May Allah bless us, with, bless us all with the best ending. Amen. Let's move on. That was the one, one ayat stop here, but still a lot more to say, but I have to move on. وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ وَلَا تَكُونُوا أَوَّلَ كَافِرٍ بِهِ Allah Ta'ala is saying, O people, addressing Bani Israel, but overall addressing everyone. O people, آمِنُوا 
believe in what I have revealed with confirming what was revealed before. Means what I have revealed similar to what I've revealed before. Means I didn't change the religion. I didn't send a new religion. It's not a new religion. It's the religion of Ibrahim. You know, some people come and say Islam is religion of Muhammad. No, Islam is not religion of Muhammad. Islam is religion of Allah. Inna dina inda Allah Islam. Religion of Allah. So when he sent Adam, that was the same religion. When he sent Idris, Ayyub, Ya'qub, Sulaiman, Dawood, all of these people, they came with the same religion. Alayhim salatu wassalam. And Muslimun, the Muslim word, where did it come from? Did Muhammad invent this word? No. Wasalam. Did Prophet Sosim invent this word? No. no. Quran says, Who was Sammakum al Muslimin? Ibrahim named you Muslim. Ibrahim named you Muslim, not Muhammad. <laughs> so it's a religion of Ibrahim. So if religion of Ibrahim you agree with, then all Jews, Christians, and Muslims, they all end on one root. Which is the root is Ibrahim alayhi salam. And that's the religion of Ibrahim is still continuing. Allah Ta'ala refreshed it. Why? Because people buried so much information. And Allah Ta'ala needed to refresh it. And send it to someone who passes to the people. So people know what's the religion. And that's why Allah Ta'ala did refresh the system. And said, أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ Today I have completed my religion. And then he said, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun, that we have completed it, we have sent it down, and we will protect it. Means the people will not be able to change it like they did with Tawrat, like they did with Injil, Quran, they can mess around with. I will protect it. So that's all. That's all it happened. Allah Ta'ala refreshed the system, like you do when your computer or mobile phone gets too much junk in it and it doesn't work properly, you refresh it. You do restart and reboot everything. And that's why Allah Ta'ala rebooted the system and gave a book, complete book, which is Quran. That's all. So Allah Ta'ala is saying, accept Islam and believe in everything what Allah Ta'ala has sent down, confirming what was sent before. Means similar to what was sent before. Don't be the first one to reject it. Don't be the first one to reject it. Does that mean Allah is allowing you be the last one to reject? No, no, no. That, that's not what he meant. Means, don't be, don't be on the front line to reject the Quran. Because of you, millions might reject it and you will get sin of all of those. You will get sin of all of those. <coughs> so those people, they stay on the front line and they criticize Quran or Islam or Muslims, they're going to get the sin of the entire world. Because of them, many others getting misguided. <coughs> so don't be one of those. So worship Allah, <coughs> accept Allah's religion, follow Allah's religion, be a friend of Allah. That's what Allah wants you to be. Don't be one of those who rejects the deen. And don't sell my verses with a little price. Thaman, thaman means price, khalil means small, little. <coughs> don't sell my verses with little price. What does that mean? Means don't reject my verses for the little favor of dunya or little profit of dunya. If you earn the whole dunya and you put that in one scale and put one ayah of Quran on the other scale, the ayah will be more valuable and more stronger and more weighty than the whole world. <coughs> because the whole world doesn't value anything. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, that if the world had the value of a wing of a mosquito, Allah Ta'ala wouldn't have given a drop of water to the disbelievers. Means the world doesn't have the value of a wing of a mosquito. But you and I, we are running behind the dunya and we are forgetting the Qur'an. And that's what's happening. That we are selling the Qur'an for the price of dunya. We are leaving Qur'an behind and running for dunya. Allah says, no, don't. Focus on your Qur'an. That will give you more than what dunya will give you. Dunya won't give you anything. People came and said to Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will give you the wealth of Mecca. 
We will make you the leader of Mecca. We will make you the most rich man in Mecca. We will get you married with the most pretty women of Mecca. Prophet wasallam said, if you place the moon on my one hand and sun on the other hand, still I will reject what you say because I'm not here for dunya, I'm here for dunya. Allah, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Brothers, where is your iman? Yeah, where is your iman? Where is your deen? Why are we selling the deen for dunya? Don't sell your deen for dunya. Look after your deen. Prioritize your deen. Do not prioritize your dunya. Your dunya will come. Your dunya will run after you when you will run after deen. But if you run after the dunya, your deen is lost, dunya is lost as well. Khasirat dunya wal akhirah. You will be loser in the dunya and in the akhirah. Look, Sahaba, Sahaba kicked the world away from them. The world ran after them. Allah gave them so much wealth that they ruled. Yeah? They ruled without having power like people have today. And they didn't rule one country, they ruled more than one country. So Allah gave them that power. And that power continued for a very, very long time until very recent time. The power continued. And that's only if you hold on to your Iman, Allah can give that back to you. And we need to build that trust, that Allah trusts us. For that we have to look after our deen, prioritize our Quran. And I always say that don't ask your child to read the Quran. You read the Quran in front of the child, watch your child will read it automatically. Are you understanding me? Don't ask him, wait, 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 what did you read? What did you read? Did you read today? Did you read today? No, you don't have to do that. You read in front of him, watch he will read it automatically. But if you don't, you're watching TV asking him to read Quran. How will he read Quran? He need environment. They need people to support. <coughs> so be very careful. Don't sell your deen for dunya. And fear me only. Again, fattaqoon. So over there, farhaboon. Farhaboon means fear. Fattaqoon means fear. Farhaboon is the fear of kings and rulers. That sort of fear is called farhaboon. And fattaqoon is the fear what you do with love. Like you fear your mom because you love her. You don't want to hurt her. You fear your dad, dad. Why? Because you love him. You respect him. You care about him. That's why you don't want to hurt him. That sort of fear is called taqwa. So fattaqoon, fear Allah from your heart because you love him, you respect him, you care about him. And you know what he done for you. And you respect all of those. That's called taqwa. So fear him again from your heart. So one is the physical fear from outer body that you fear because of the power of the ruler. That Allah used farhaboon, fear me. Then another type of fear that you actually fear from the heart because you respect, you love them. So that sort of fear Allah wants from you as well. So both type of fear Allah needs. So not just showing him that you fear but you actually don't fear in the heart. Allah needs both, both type of fear. May Allah make us amongst those people who fear him with everything. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Then Allah says, وَلَا تَلْبِسُوا الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتَكْتُمُوا الْحَقَّ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ لَا تَلْبِسُوا الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ Do not mix the haqq and batil. Haqq means truthful. And batil means untruthful. Falsehood. So do not mix the truthful and falsehood together. How do you do that? You do that by lying when you lie so you pray your salah you lie so you think lying is halal when you're doing all the good things you believe in Allah but you actually steal you do good things and you cheat these are you mixing the haq and bati no if you're on haq then stay on haq forever don't bring batil inside. Leave the batil like Sahaba did. Sahaba, when they brought their iman, they kicked the batil away so much, the batil didn't enter back in again. We say Allah is there, but we worship other things at the same time. Yes, we worship other things at the same time. We burn candles on top of the graves. 
We beautify the graves. We worship graves. We ask from the people of graves. So all these things haram. Haram. So how can you say La ilaha illallah and then you were asking someone else to give you something? Why? There was a sheikh, he was saying, he was giving an example of a place and he said, look, all these people going around the grave of that man and they're asking for shifa. Well, the man, he himself died while he was unwell. <laughs> the man who's in the grave, he himself died because of illness. Now people going and asking Shifa from him, how will you give Shifa? If he had any control of Shifa on his hand, then who would have cured himself first, isn't it? He would have cured himself first. So we have to understand the shit what we do. We don't realize how we do shit. We do a lot of shit, a lot of bid'ah. And that's why Allah Ta'ala says, La talbisul haqqa bil batin. Don't mix haqq and batin. And sometimes what we do to show our power, to show our culture, to show our legacy, we hold on to things what we are doing. And so tightly we hold it that even millions of people, they come and say, it's against the Quran, we don't want to let it go. We say, We found our fathers and forefathers doing like this. Yes, there are. There are. Go do a research in the community and check. You will find a lot of things they will say, no, I don't want to let this go because my <coughs> fathers and grandfathers did this. My people did this. My community did this. And I need to hold on to it. And you tell him, brother, it's against the sunnah. He will say, I don't care. Have they done wrong? That's the question they ask you. They say, have they done wrong? Of course they don't. <laughs> Listen. So we have to be careful. So Allah says, لا تلبس الحق بالباطل Don't mix حق and باطل Follow the حق, leave the باطل Doesn't matter even if it's 100 years you've done it 100 years you've done it wrong way Your son come and said, Dad It's not this way This, this should be this way You ask him, say, son, prove it Give me your evidence Say to him, هاتو برهانك Bring your evidence here if he brings your bring brings Quran, Sunnah, and some scholars and explaining this, accept it. Accept it. Don't show power on that time and don't say, You were born yesterday. What do you know? I'm your dad, I know more than you. No, don't do that. Your son was born yesterday. That doesn't mean he doesn't have the power of learning. He learned and respect him. Yes, if it's coming with the truth, accept it. And that's where people of Mecca failed. That's where people of Mecca failed. They didn't understand that Muhammad was born yesterday, but that doesn't mean he can't be a prophet. Allah has chosen him to be a prophet. Allah has chosen him to be a prophet over Abu Jahl. Allah didn't choose Abu Jahl. Allah didn't choose Abu Lahab, even though they were older in age, even though they were educated. Allah didn't choose them. Why? Allah knows why. Allah chosen Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a young man from the community to be a prophet. So accept him. And those people accepted him. What happened? What happened to them? Allah Ta'ala said, that for them is Jannah. Jaza'uhum inda rabbihim. Jannatu adnin tajrim in tahtiha al-anharu khalidin fiha abadan. Radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an. Thalika liman khashiya rabbah. Allah Ta'ala says, guarantee for Jannah for them. For all of them. Those who accepted Muhammad Rasulullah as a prophet. And those who said, no, he's the, he's the boy of yesterday. What happened? Allah Ta'ala killed them. And not only that, Allah Ta'ala sent la'nat on them. Cursed on them. And Allah Ta'ala, he himself revealed surah on Abu Lahab, cursing him. Yada Abi Lahab in Watab. So dad, don't be one of those dad. Like Abu Lahab. Mom, don't be one of those mom. Like the wife of Abu Lahab. Who was who was who were cursed? The wife of Abu Lahab was also cursed. So don't be one of those. When someone coming with the truth, accept it, follow it, do a research. That's your right. If you after research, if you see your son is wrong, leave him. You follow what is yours. But if you see he's right, accept it. That's what Deen teaches us. 
Don't mix haq and batil together. وَتَكْتُمُ الْحَقَّ يعني وَلَا تَكْتُمُ الْحَقَّ And do not hide the truth. Do not hide the truth. Sometimes we hide the truth because of our culture, because of our family tradition. The truth is, as an example, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made mahar easy. Mahar easy. Did you know that? Do you know what mahar is? Mahar is the dowry where you pay in the time of marriage. Prophet Sallallahu made it easy. There was a person who came to get married. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to get married. Can you find me a bride? He said, Yes, I got bride here. What do you what what, what do you have to give her? He said, I don't have anything. Prophet said, go, go get something. He went in space, spent half day walking on the street, looking for some metal, found some metal. Uh, what do you call uh fitol, fitol, what, what do you call it? Copper. Copper, isn't it? Copper. Yeah, he found some copper. He bent it, turned it into a ring, cleaned it nicely, made it shiny looking. <coughs> copper, if you, if, you, if you rub it on a cloth, it becomes clean and shiny, isn't it? So he made it clean, nice, shiny, got it to Rasulullah and said, this is I can offer her. Will she accept me as a husband? Prophet said, will you accept him as a husband? She said, yes, of course. Prophet said, that's your husband and wife, though. No. Done. SubhanAllah. All he gave, a ring, he found some metal copper on the street, Bent it, fixed it, made it turn into ring, and that's it done. Another person comes, he says, the women came in this time, said, I'm looking for a husband. Not same day, probably a few days later, a few years later, Allah Ta'ala knows how long later. So she goes, I'm looking for a husband. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to a Sahaba, he said, you were looking for a wife, right? He goes, yes. He said, what do you have to give her? He goes, I don't have anything. Prophet asked her, she, he said, do you know Quran? She said, no, not yet. I'm a new Muslim, new Muslim. So just became Muslim. He said, do you know Quran to the man? The Sahaba said, yes, I know a few surahs. He said, you will teach those surahs to her and that is her mahar. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Means if you were teaching her, she would have paid you as a teacher. So as if you paid her that already. The amount, whatever she needed to pay you, you gave her. And that's the matter. Marriage was done. So this is Islam, my friends. Islam makes things easy and our culture makes things hard. They make things, they say, mahar has to be big because security of the girl. What security of the girl? There is no security. If one wants to divorce, he can divorce. <laughs> so there is no security. There is security in that that you keep the sunnah in the sunnah way. There is a better security because there will be less pressure on the man and there will be less fights in their family. Otherwise, they will have fights every day. The husband will say to wife, your father forced me to pay 10,000 and because of that, I'm in debt. I'm in loan. I'm in this. I'm in that. And she's going to say, did I ask you to do that? And they're going to end up breaking things. And she's going to end up going to her parents' house. And then problem carries on. Then eventually what happens? Marriage? Breaks. So we are, we are here to connect people, not break people. We are here to connect families, not break families. So that's where it comes. Don't hide the truth. Learn the truth, follow the truth. Don't be selfish and don't start prioritizing your own idea into public and getting them do it because of your selfish reason. No, Prophet ﷺ wasn't one of those. Prophet ﷺ was Alameen, mercy for the mankind. He's to look at people, he's to see what they need, and based on that, he's to make the rulings. SubhanAllah. You know what he said in, in a hadith? He said, Bashiru wala tunafiru. They give glad tidings, do not separate people. Give good news, get people together. And then he said in another hadith, Yassiru wa la Make life easy, don't make it hard. Don't make people life hard. Make life easy. Then he says, Atimu ta'am, feed people. Afshu salam, say salam to people. Meet people, greet people. Yeah. Tahadu <coughs> tahabaktu. He goes, give gifts, you will start liking each other. So why did, does he say all of these? Because he wants to keep people together. But today we separate those because we say, oh, I'm from Talubda, he's from Maswa. I'm from Fanwa, 
He's from Soyodi. Allah knows what they what do, do they mean. I don't understand any of those. But to me is all the human are equal. Doesn't matter what tribe they are from. And those tribal value value is not there anymore. Now everyone is equal, everyone is studying, everyone growing up, everyone understanding how things work. Those days it was different. <clears throat> Only rich people they used to study, poor people they can't afford to study. That's why there was a big difference. <coughs> but now everyone's studying. Everyone's understanding Deen, everyone understanding English, maps and science. So those tribal understanding is not there anymore, it needs to go away. And we need to start looking after each other. May Allah give us the true understanding of Deen. <coughs> وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ Sorry, وَتَكْتُمُ الْحَقَّ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Do not hide the truth knowingly. So many of us, we do knowingly. May Allah protect us. If it's unknowingly, then Allah, Allah will forgive us. Inshallah. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ I will finish in 10 minutes, Brother Noor, Inshallah. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَارْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ And وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ Establish Salah. وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ Give Zakah. وَرْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Do Rukur with the people who's doing Rukur. So one is establishing Salah. Already Allah said. But again, He made it more firm by saying وَرْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Do Rukur with the people who's doing Rukur. What does that mean? It means stay together. Don't separate yourself. Jamaah. Jamaah. Pray together. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after he moved down to Medina, the best thing he established is a mosque. So there, there, can, there can be adhan and there can be prayer and all the Muslims can pray together. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he designed the mosque, there was a section for women at the back. There was a section specifically made for women. Allahu Akbar. So we need to think what we're doing, how we're doing, are we following the Sunnah or not? Yes, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the brotherhood. The one Muhajir and one Ansar, they became brothers. Do we have this brotherhood? We came from back home and we got different communities, people. Are we like brothers? Are we? Do we see someone else, someone non-Bengali as my brother? Do we sit with him, talk with him, eat together? Do we? Do we invite him to my house? Do we? No. Then where is the brotherhood? Where? We only look for the faces that from my community. No, Professor Sam didn't do that. Prophet Sosa made one Meccans, one Medina, and a brother. And that's how it should be. So we need to look for the different communities, people, and get them closer to us so we can be like brothers. Can we do that, inshallah? inshallah. Yeah, look after them. Every community's responsibility is that. To look for someone who's not from your community and get him to your place. Let it sit down and share each other's feelings. That's the way you get deen. <coughs> So pray, establish your prayer, give zakat. By giving zakat, you're helping out the poor people in between you. Within you, you got poor people in to help them by giving zakat. And then pray with the prayers when they are praying. Ruruku, when they are doing ruku. At that murun and nasa bilbir, Rasulullah Allah Ta'ala says, Five minutes, sir. Five minutes, I'll finish it. At that murun and nasa bilbir, we were tinsawna and fusaku wa antum tatlun al kitab, apala ta'kibu. Oh people, do you call people to do good deeds? وَتَنْسَوْنَا أَنفُسَكُمْ And you forget yourself. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Do you understand what you're doing? That's a big mistake you're making. You're asking your son to read Quran, you don't read Quran. Okay. You're asking your wife to wear a scarf for when she goes up. But when you're doing things wrong, that's th that, that time is fine. Do we have men like that in the communities as well? A lot of men, when he's doing wrong, oh, don't worry, I'm the boss. It's okay for me. But when she's doing something wrong, Hey, why did you go out without this car? Where is your mercy? Where is your kindness? Where is your softness? Oh man, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Khayrukum, khayru ahli, or khayru ma'a ahli. The best amongst you is the one who is best with his family. Best amongst you is the one who is best with his wife. Oh man, grow up, understand, wake up. The deen of Rasulullah. Yeah. He lived with 11 wives. Not a single wife complained against him. And we live with one wife and she's got millions of complaints against us. Yeah. It's because we've been unfair with them. Because we don't show mercy to them. Yes, be careful. 
Just because Allah has given you the power of talaq with you, don't treat her all the time, I'll divorce you. No. That's not a power. That's a way out. If the things get too messy, then you get a way out. That's the way out. That's not a power to threat her. Prophet Sallallahu never threatened his wives. <coughs> never ever threatened his wife that I will divorce you. So be very careful. We men misuse our information and misunderstood things. So Allah says, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرْ Do you tell people to do good deeds and you don't do it? You tell your son, your daughters, your wife, your parents, your children, your friends, do this, do this, do this. But when it comes to your turn, you say, oh, it's fine for me. No, don't do that. وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ kitab. You are reading Quran. You are understanding the deen. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Don't you understand? Means don't do that. While you're reading the book, you are understanding the book. Follow the book. That's what Allah wants. And that's what Allah wants from the Israel as well. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَةِ Ask help from Allah with sabr and salah. Not salah and sabr. Sabr and salah. Sabr is more important than salah. Sabr, patience is more important than salah. Today we don't have the patience. We are praying. But what I found before I come, people stood up. People stood up. That means they don't have the sabr. So sabr needs to be there. People making mistakes, be patient. Someone came and grabbed Prophet Sallallahu Qamis. Prophet Sallallahu didn't slap him. What did he do? He said to Umar, Umar, come down, sit down. Give him and pay whatever he needs. This was the akhlaq of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So akhlaq, build your akhlaq. Build your character. Have patience in life. Watch, success will come under your feet. <coughs> and pray your salah properly, regularly, without missing. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ This patience and prayer, it's very hard on people except they are khashi'een, except they have the khushu'ur, true conviction of Allah Ta'ala. True, true admitting or submitting in front of Allah Ta'ala. If they submit their self to Allah Ta'ala properly, then they will be able to do the sabr and salah. Otherwise, their iman is weak. They will die. They will cry, they will suicide, they will this, they will do that, and so much because no patience in life. And Allah Ta'ala wants us to have patience. So if your son goes wrong against your deen, still you should hold on to him and have patience and allow him to stay in your house. That's Nuh alayhi salam did. Nuh alayhi salatu was salam allowed the son to stay with him until his last breath, until the tufan, until the flood covered him. So Nuh alayhi salatu was salam was calling, son come in. Innahu min ahli, it's my son, it's my family. Then after he was drowned, Allah Ta'ala said, Innahu laysa min ahli, he's not your family. So until last breath of him, Nuh alayhi salatu was salam tried him to get him to the right path. And you and I, what do we do? With one mistake, we say, get out of my house. You're not coming me and you're not calling me dad ever again. Where did you get that from? This is not Islam. Your daughter made millions of mistakes. Get her in, that's your daughter. Your son made millions of mistakes. Get him in and that's your son. Because of your rahmah, he might turn. He might repent. And because of your harshness, he's never going to repent. So which one do you want? Your son to go to Jannah or your son to go to Jahannam? So give him the door of Jannah then. Open the door, have some mercy, he might repent. He might realize his mistake. Okay, same with your wives. Yes, you give her talaq. If she's doing one thing bad, she's going to do a hundred things bad then. Because she doesn't have no one else to tell her off now. And allow her to stay, have mercy. Be kind and gentle. Slowly, slowly she will switch. She will turn. Because after all, she made the promise to live with you as well. Yes, so we'll finish it. Yeah, my, my time is running. الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah Ta'ala said, Illa ala al khashi'een. Except the people who submitted the self properly. And who are these people they submitted the self? Allah Ta'ala is explaining. Those people believe that annahum mulaqu rabbihim. They will meet Allah Ta'ala. Wa annahum ilayhi raji'oon. And they will go and return back to Allah Ta'ala. Only they fear Allah properly. And only they have the true patience and they pray properly. So what do we get conclusion that we need to have the true submission to Allah, true fear of Allah and true understanding of Akhirah and true remembrance that we will stand in front of Allah.
If we remember these, then inshallah, everything else what we covered today, it will be easy and we will be able to mention the greatness of Allah Ta'ala and we will be grateful to Allah Ta'ala and in that way, Allah Ta'ala will fulfill His promises and we will fulfill our promises. May Allah Ta'ala make us amongst the true servants of Him and may Allah Ta'ala make us amongst the righteous people. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. We'll finish here. Subhanallah bihamdi, Subhanallah Azim. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa nahdu bilaih.